After seeing the reception my Life of Alec Lightwood video received, I decided that I would do a video covering the life of his younger sister, Isabel. She's one of my all-time favorite female characters in YA, and she's one of the best examples of a female character that is sexually liberated. Her graphic novel artwork depicts her sitting amongst purple columbines, with the tagline underneath her portrait reading, Resolved to Win. Both Emerald Tubia and Jemima West equally showcased her greatest qualities, but there were some major details about her character that the movie and the show didn't get a chance to include, so I hope today I'll be able to do her justice. Even though this video will be based on information from the books and the short stories, I will be including footage from both the movie, City of Bones, and the Shadowhunters television series to help make things more visually pleasing for you guys. Now, let's begin. Isabel Izzy Sophia Lightwood was born on May 15, 1991, to Robert and Maris Lightwood when her older brother Alec was two years old. Izzy's zodiac sign being an Aries naturally meant that she would have a very bright energy and she would be born with a natural aura of confidence. She would also be an extremely passionate person, and she lived up to this from a very young age. She was especially close to her elder brother, whom she loved very much, and when she was seven years old, her little brother Max was born. Isabel took on the role of an older sister very well. She loved to feel wanted, and she loved knowing that she was needed by other people. So, when the orphaned Jace Wayland arrived at the Institute and she learned he'd witnessed his father being killed right in front of him, Isabel jumped at the chance to take care of him, and she expected him to come to her like a scared child, seeking comfort. Instead, she was left disappointed when she realized how resilient, tough, and independent Jace was. However, Jace came to see Izzy as his equal and a potential training partner, and Izzy in return grew to love him the same way that she loved her brothers. For the first 12 years of her life, Izzy idolized both her parents, especially her father, and was a true image of a daddy's little girl. After she got her first mark, Robert gifted Izzy with an Electrum-infused gold snake whip for her 12th birthday and this became her weapon of choice on the battlefield. She would also eventually own a ruby red demon necklace, which was a Lightwood family heirloom, and it also served as her sensor, allowing her to track the presence of demonic energy. Also, during her childhood, she and Alec became acquainted with Gia Penhallow's daughter, Aline, who was their closest friend due to their parents often doing business together in Alicante. Even as a little girl, Isabel was exceptionally beautiful, and her beauty only enhanced as she got older. She was often described as ribbon slim, with a tiny waist and taller than most boys, with coal black eyes and long, shiny, inky black hair. And as she got older, she was often seen wearing her signature red lipstick, and she also developed a knack for makeup and interior design having painted the walls of her own bedroom black speckled with gold glitter. But when she turned 13, everything changed for Isabel. Izzy lost all respect for her father when she found out through Maris that Robert had been having an affair since before Max was born. Maris warned her daughter to guard her heart, and Isabel, seeing how much it hurt her mother, grew to distrust any and all men in general but she especially withheld a deep grudge against her father, never forgiving him for his lies and deceit against her mom. A while after this, Izzy took on a few of Jace's rebellious qualities, having more fun breaking the rules. I'll get approval for the mission. Come on, Alec. By the time you sent that message, we will have killed six demons. Besides, it's more fun to break the rules than to follow. And she also developed a lot of promiscuity, dressing in very revealing outfits and casually sleeping with boys that she knew her parents would never approve of, including the Seely Knight, Meliorn, and even a ghost. Part of her motivation behind using her feminine sexuality was to protect Alec, whom she always knew was gay. She knew the Clave and her parents would never accept Alec if they found out about his sexual orientation, so she did everything that she could to take as much attention off him as possible. Additionally, as she got older, 
Her parents entrusted Hodge Starkweather to act as a tutor slash godfather to her, Alec, and Jace. Izzy being the only girl surrounded by boys tried fulfilling many of the maternal duties at the institute, including, much to the horror of Hodge, Jace, and Alec, cooking, a skill that she was horrendous at due to the dishes that she made never being edible, which always prompted them to either live off, take out, or make things themselves. In the summer of 2007, Isabel was out with Alec and Jace at the Pandemonium Club hunting demons. Izzy acted as the bait, flirting with an Eidolon demon and luring him into the storage unit, allowing Jace and Alec to sneak behind and finish him off. But before they could kill the demon, it began blabbering that Valentine Morgenstern, the leader of the circle, had returned. They were also stalled by Clary Frey, who'd snuck in after them and compromised the mission, which led to Jace getting hurt. Izzy lashed out with her whip and wrapped the weapon around Clary's wrists, angrily telling the unmarked Shadowhunter that she could have gotten Jace killed. After Clary got injured by a Ravener demon, Jace brought her back to the Institute, where she lay in the infirmary for three days. Jace tasked Izzy with looking after the girl, and Izzy had doubts that Clary would recover, not wanting to call in the Silent Brothers, as they gave her the creeps. When Clary woke up, Izzy helped take care of her by feeding Clary a brewed mix of medicinal herbs, and she also offered the younger girl some of her old clothes to change into, despite knowing that they wouldn't fit Clary well at all. She filled Clary in about Jace's background and advised Clary that she should get showered before meeting with Hodge, who was interested in talking to Clary. Later on, Jace returned home with Clary and Clary's best friend, Simon Lewis. Jace asked their resident pet cat, Church, to lead him to Alec, but much to Jace's anger, Church brought him to Isabel instead, who was in the kitchen trying to make a tomato, olive, peanut, and fish soup. When Clary laid eyes on Izzy standing over the stove, she was disgusted that Simon was showing interest, as Izzy was just the type of girl that Simon's sexist friend Eric would encourage him to go out with. Thin as a twig, super tall, and dangerously beautiful, which left Clary feeling a wave of overprotectiveness for her friend. When Izzy saw Simon with them, she pointed out how much trouble Jace was going to be in letting a mundane into the institute. Jace was furious with the cat, yelling at church, I told you to bring me to Alec, and called the cat a backstabbing Judas, to which Izzy replied, don't blame Church. It's not his fault Hodge is going to kill you. And Jace put together the reason why Church brought them to Izzy instead of Alec had been because Izzy was stuffing Church with fish again. Jace called the cat Podgy, and Izzy said, He does not look Podgy. Besides, none of the rest of you ever eat anything. I got this recipe from a water sprite at the Chelsea Market. He said it was delicious and Jace proceeded to break Izzy's chops about her horrible cooking skills, saying, if you knew how to cook, maybe I would eat. Izzy angrily asks him, what did you say? Izzy proceeded to ask everyone if they would want any soup, and Simon was the only one to say that he wanted to try it, though he did this to make Clary jealous as he had feelings for Clary, but he was also smitten with how attractive and sexy Isabel was. Jace sneered at Simon, saying, No you don't, you just want to sleep with Isabel. Afterward, Jace explained to Clary, I was trying to save him some pain. Isabel will cut out his heart and walk all over it in high-heeled boots. That's what she does to boys like that. Jace explained to Clary why Maris never taught Izzy how to cook. It was because Maris wanted to raise her daughter to be fiercely independent and a warrior, and didn't want to see her eldest and only daughter be raised with the old-fashioned mindset that girls should stay at home cooking and cleaning all day. Later on, Izzy tracked down Jace, Clary, and Hodge to the Institute Greenhouse, telling them that it was dinner time. Hodge and Jace claimed that they weren't hungry, with Hodge stammering that he ate a very filling lunch, to which Izzy explained that she threw the soup out and had ordered Chinese food instead. This led to Jace and Hodge deciding that perhaps they could eat, since Izzy didn't cook the food and was just serving it. 
Isabel glared at them and called them terrible liars, saying, Look, I know you don't like my cooking. And Jace advised her to stop doing it before asking her if she ordered him his favorite order of mushu pork. When Izzy confirmed that she did, Jace affectionately ruffled her hair and they went down to dinner. The next morning, while Clary and Jace went to see the Silent Brothers, Izzy took Simon around Central Park, showing him the fairy circles and further educating Simon about the Shadow World. Afterward, Izzy and Simon met Alec, Jace, and Clary for breakfast at the Shadow World restaurant Takis. Isabel came in smelling strongly of vanilla perfume, a scent that Clary hated. Izzy then revealed she gathered some intel by collecting a flyer advertising a party that would be hosted by the High Warlock of Brooklyn, Magnus Bane, which would be happening that night. Later that night, Izzy offered to help Clary get ready for Magnus's party and insisted that Clary not wear her own clothes, as Isabel understood that if Clary showed up there looking like a mundane, she wouldn't fit in at a party full of downworlders. Isabel tossed Clary a black dress, with Clary claiming that it looked a bit small, to which Izzy said, it's stretchy, now go put it on. And when Clary came out in the slinky dress, Isabel complimented her on having such a flat chest, claiming that she could never wear that without a bra. Isabel proceeded to do Clary's hair and makeup for her, and Clary asked the older girl whether Alec was gay or not, and Izzy asked Clary how she could have guessed, before quickly saying, you absolutely can't tell anyone. Clary brushed it off as not a big deal, and Izzy explained that it wasn't a big deal to her either, but to her parents, they would disown Alec, and the older generations in the clave didn't like it either. Isabel proceeded to say, I love my brother. I'd do anything for him, but there's nothing I can do. And much to Clary's surprise, she loved the makeover Izzy had given her, claiming that it made her look more like her mother, whom Clary always thought of as far more beautiful than her. And the fact that Izzy had done such a great job doing her makeup in a way that brought out her features in such a flattering way, I think this comforted Clary a little bit, and it made her feel much more like a woman. This was the first instance where Izzy displayed that while she took care of the people she loved, she didn't overly smother them. She did it in a way that made her family feel as though they could stand on their own and be more independent, and in my opinion, I'd imagine this meant a lot to Clary, who'd been overly sheltered her entire life and lied to about her identity. At the party, while the others spoke to Magnus, Izzy led Simon onto the dance floor and flirtatiously danced with him, which led to Clary feeling even more overprotective of Simon, thinking for sure that Izzy would just break Simon's heart the way Jace said she would. However, when Simon accidentally drank a blue beverage that turned him into a rat, Izzy panicked and told the others, saying that she had warned Simon not to drink anything. Clary was enraged at Isabel for leading Simon on and putting him in danger, and Izzy continued expressing remorse for what had happened to Simon. After Clary and Jace rescued Simon from the vampires, Izzy fussed over both boys in the infirmary. Later that night, while Jace and Clary had their late night picnic in the Institute's greenhouse, Clary expressed to Jace her many insecurities, comparing herself to Isabel and telling him that she felt Izzy hated her due to her experiences with Izzy being very cold. But Jace told her, no she doesn't. You just make her nervous because she's always been the only girl in a crowd of adoring boys and now she isn't anymore. Clary was shocked and she said, but she's so beautiful. And Jace ended up complimenting Clary, telling her, so are you, and very different from how she is. And she can't help but notice that. She's always wanted to be small and delicate, you know. She hates being taller than most boys. When they went to retrieve the mortal cup from Clary's neighbor, a witch named Madame Dorothea, Izzy went along for the mission. Unfortunately, Madame Dorothea had been murdered, and her body had been possessed by a greater demon. But before Abaddon could kill them, it was Simon who ended up saving them, killing the demon with Alec's bow and arrow by shooting at the skylight, as Alec had been severely poisoned during the fight and couldn't do anything to help them. Izzy was greatly impressed by Simon's bravery and skill, and voiced her amazement to him, saying, 
saying, Simon, what you did, that was incredible. You moved so fast. I wouldn't have thought a mundane could have thought of something like that. Izzy stayed by Alex's side while he recovered in the infirmary and had been there to witness Magnus Bane arriving at her brother's aid. After the battle against Valentine, Alec was on the men to recovering, and Izzy continued nursing him back to health. When Clary arrived at the institute to talk to Jace about the complicated new development of them being siblings, Izzy surprised Clary by racing up to her and hugging her tightly, exclaiming how good it was to see her. When Izzy pulled away, she expressed to Clary how worried she'd been about her, and recounted to her everything that had happened on her and Alec's end. This led to a conversation between the two girls, with Clary saying, I didn't expect you to be this glad to see me. When Izzy asked her why not, Clary admitted that she didn't think Izzy liked her very much, and Izzy confessed, I didn't think I did either, but when I went to look for you and Jace, and you were gone, I wasn't just worried about him, I was worried about you too. There's something so reassuring about you, and Jace is so much better when you're around. Clary was astonished by this confession, and Izzy continued, saying, He is, actually, less sharp-edged somehow. It's not so much that he's kinder, but that he lets you see the kindness in him. And I guess I resented you at first, but I realize now that, that was stupid. Just because I've never had a friend who was a girl doesn't mean I couldn't learn how to have one. Clary confessed the same thing, and told Isabel that she didn't need to pretend to be warm, fuzzy, and nice. That Clary preferred Izzy just as herself, to which Izzy laughed warmly and teasingly asked, Bitchy, you mean? From that point on, Isabel and Clary grew a little closer, but they were still distant from one another, trying to adjust to the idea of being friends with another girl, and Izzy helped Clary bring more feminine pieces such as dresses and skirts into her wardrobe, as Clary was accustomed to dressing more like a tomboy. For weeks, Izzy, Alec, and Jace were left without any adult supervision due to Hodge's betrayal, with Alec shouldering most of the adult responsibilities. One night, after a hunt against dragon demons, Alec, Izzy, and Jace arrived at the institute covered in mud, bruised and battered. Alec demanded to know how Izzy managed to not get mud all over her, to which Izzy swiftly replied with, I'm pure at heart. It repels the dirt. The three siblings morbidly joked about trailing mud across Maris' antique rugs and carpets, and Maris stepped into the hallway, informing them that she was home. Izzy raced up and hugged her mother, trying to cover for both her brothers, and she asked where their little brother Max was. Maris sternly told them that the Clave was aware of the unsanctioned missions they'd gone on, retrieving the Mortal Cup and rescuing Jocelyn Fairchild. Maris threw Jace out of their home, and Izzy, frantic about Jace's whereabouts, called Clary and asked her to track Jace down, knowing that Jace would most likely not listen to anyone else but Clary at that point. The High Inquisitor then arrived to question Jace and investigate him, and after Jace disrespected her, she threw him into jail at the City of Bones. Izzy, Alec, and Clary went to rescue him, and together worked to clear Jace's name. While doing so, they investigated the murders of several Downworlders, and the Seely Queen requested that they meet in her court. Izzy, Clary, Jace, and Simon traveled to the Seely Court to meet with the Queen, and while there, Izzy threw herself on the knight, Meliorn, wrapping her arms around him, to which he responded indifferently towards. After the queen tricked Clary into receiving a kiss from Jace right in front of Simon, who happened to be dating Clary at this point, Izzy hated seeing Clary in such an uncomfortable position. Between Clary being manipulated by the queen and Meliorn coldly turning her away, not even bothering to say goodbye to her, Izzy insisted that she was so breaking up with Meliorn. Later that night, 
Rafael Santiago delivered a dying Simon who'd been drained of blood and had only two options left, either be left for dead or get buried and turned into a vampire. Izzy was present for Simon's burial, but she worried immensely for Simon, thinking that perhaps it would be better if he got left to rest in peace, as the life of a vampire was no life anybody wanted to live, a life where you had to feed, stay out of the sunlight, and hide from the world. But Clary mistook this for Isabel not caring, when in fact, that was the opposite. Izzy later became furious with the High Inquisitor bargaining with Valentine, Jace's life in exchange for the mortal instruments. Isabel called the Inquisitor out on her horrible decision making and poor leadership, especially since Valentine revealed that Jace wasn't his spy. Izzy was amongst those who joined in the battle aboard Valentine's ship, along with members of the New York Conclave. A few weeks later, Izzy joined her family on a trip to Idris for the signing of the Accords. But before they could leave, they were attacked by a group of Forsaken, and Simon, who was also in danger, joined them along for the trip. While in Alicante, Izzy and the others met with family friends, the Penhallows, and Aline's cousin, Sebastian Verlach. While Simon remained imprisoned in the guard, Izzy often visited with bags of blood so that he wouldn't starve, along with little flirtatious notes marked with X's and O's. Unfortunately, the Lightwoods learned that they put their trust in the wrong person when it turned out that Sebastian was indeed the spy for Valentine, and had climbed the demon towers to deactivate them and leave Alicante vulnerable to Valentine's demon army. Izzy didn't want to believe it, but Sebastian, who'd been tasked by Alec to look after her and Max, knocked Isabel out and killed Max by delivering a traumatic blow to the boy's head. Isabel blamed herself for the death of her little brother, feeling she'd failed at protecting him. After Max's funeral, Izzy closed herself off from everyone, lashing out at anyone who tried talking to her about it. She was in fact so upset over her little brother's death that she didn't attend the funeral, thinking she didn't deserve to be there, because when Max had died, he'd been hugging a wooden toy soldier Jace had gifted to him, and Izzy claimed that she should have been the one holding Max as he died, not some stupid toy. However, Simon turned out to be the one to get through to Izzy, comforting her through her grief. And that night, he stayed by her side, and he fell asleep next to her, though it was completely non-sexual. The next morning, Simon and Izzy made breakfast together, and this led to a very deep, emotional conversation between Isabel and Clary, and this is by far one of the most important conversations that takes place throughout the entire series, in my opinion, because it really delves deeply into Clary's character development, and it shows a side of Izzy that we rarely get to see. We watch as they get vulnerable with each other, and we witness them both at their lowest they could be at that moment, with Isabel grief-stricken over Max's death and Clary worried sick about Jace. Clary and Isabel began the conversation by talking about how Jace was going on a suicide mission trying to track Sebastian and Valentine and Clary asks Isabel, do you even want to find him? Do you even care that he's gone off on what's practically a suicide mission? He can't face down Valentine all by himself. When Isabel agreed, but then added in that she trusted Jace's reasons, Clary cut her off, accusing Izzy of trusting that Jace probably wanted to die. Isabel's eyes were set to blaze with a sudden anger, and she snapped, Clary, do you think the rest of us are safe? We're all waiting to die or be enslaved. Can you really see Jace doing that? Just sitting around waiting for something awful to happen? Can you really see? Clary then pointed out that Max was Isabel's brother too, and that Izzy had cared what happened to him, except Izzy pointed out that Max had barely been a soldier in the war, he'd only been 9 years old, and that Jace on the other hand was a shadow hunter, that like Alec, he would be out there on the battlefield fighting Valentine's army. Clary pointed out that Valentine wouldn't spare Jace, and asked Isabel if Jace did die, would she even miss him? Isabel emotionally said, I will miss him every day for the rest of my life, which, let's face it, if Jace fails, will probably be about a week long. You don't get it, Clary. You don't understand what it's like to 
live always at war, to grow up with battle and sacrifice. I guess it's not your fault. It's just how you were brought up. Clary angrily cut Isabel off, accusing Izzy of not liking her because she'd been raised a mundane and not a shadow hunter. Izzy then said, you think that's why? And Clary saw that Isabel's eyes weren't just bright with anger, but also tears. This being the first instance where Izzy cried in front of Clary. Izzy then said, God, you don't understand anything, do you? You've known Jace, what, a month? I've known him for seven years. And all the time I've known him, I've never seen him fall in love. Never seen him even like anyone. He'd hook up with girls, sure. Girls always fell in love with him, but he never cared. I think that's why Alec thought... Clary noted how Izzy fought so hard not to cry, and this was the most vulnerable Clary had ever seen Izzy be with her. Izzy continued, It always worried me, and my mom too. I mean, what kind of teenage boy never even gets a crush on anyone? It was like he was always half awake where other people were concerned. I thought maybe what had happened with his father had done some sort of permanent damage to him. Like maybe he never really could love anyone. If only I'd known what had really happened with his father. But then I probably would have thought the same thing, wouldn't I? I mean, who wouldn't have been damaged by that? And then we met you. And it was like he woke up. You couldn't see it because you'd never known him any different. But I saw it. Hodge saw it. Alex saw it. Why do you think he hated you so much? It was like that from the second we met you. You thought it was amazing that you could see us, and it was. But what was amazing to me was that Chase could see you too. He kept talking about you all the way back to the Institute. He made Hodge send him out to get you. And once he brought you back, he didn't want you to leave again. Wherever you were in the room, he watched you. He was even jealous of Simon. I'm not sure he realized it himself, but he was, I could tell, jealous of a mundane. And then, after what happened to Simon at the party, he was willing to go with you to the Demort to break Clave Law just to save a mundane he didn't even like. He did it for you, because if anything had happened to Simon, you would have been hurt. You were the first person outside our family whose happiness I'd ever seen him take into consideration. Because he loved you. Isabel then continued from there, explaining that this had all been before Jace believed Clary was his sister, but as Jace began seeing Clary with Simon trying to get over him, it was like ripping bandages off and opening up a wound again. Clary said that it had been the same way for her, knowing that she couldn't have Jace in the way that she wanted so badly. She asked Izzy how she thought it was for her. Isabel proceeded with, I don't know. I can't tell what you're feeling. You're not my sister. I don't hate you, Clary. I even like you. If it were possible, th there isn't anyone I'd rather Jace be with. But I hope you can understand when I say that if by some miracle we all get through this, I hope my family moves its way somewhere so far away that we never see you again. The conversation ended with the two girls crying together, and Izzy concluded it by saying that Jace was going on this mission to hunt Valentine because he was hurting over Clary, even delving into a lot of Jace's self-worth issues. This conversation is so important because it leaves Clary realizing how much she'd changed Jace's life. The entire time, Izzy is standing there towering over Clary while Clary is seated in the chair, and never once do either of the girls move from their positions. They both express how hurt they are seeing Jace suffering, and they both conclude about something that they have in common. They care about Jace more than anything, and this sparks a turning point in their friendship. However, after this conversation ended, Simon intervened, telling Izzy that Clary has suffered just as much as Jace had, and that it shouldn't be a competition of who had it worse off. But, before Clary could tell Izzy that she and Jace learned Valentine had experimented on her and Jace as babies, Jocelyn arrived at the house, and Clary eventually learned that in fact, Jace wasn't her brother at all, but rather it was Sebastian, whose real name was Jonathan Christopher Morgenstern. 
Clary told Izzy, Alec, and Simon about this new development, how Jonathan Christopher had disguised himself as Sebastian to get close to them, and Izzy, determined to find Jace, had Magnus help her find him through a tracking spell. When Izzy arrived through the portal to find Jace nearly dying at Sebastian's hands, Izzy was quick to intercept, and she saved Jace's life, helping him finish Sebastian off, and she avenged the death of Max. After the mortal war was over, Izzy, Clary, Jace, Alex, Simon, and Magnus all celebrated in Angel Square, with Izzy helping Clary pick out outfits for the festivities. Together, they all stood united and watched the fireworks show, more than relieved that the war was over and that everything, at least for now, was going to be okay. Six weeks after the mortal war, everything was seemingly at peace, and Izzy began regularly seeing Simon. One night in late October, she met with Simon at a Ukrainian diner. They'd been consistently spending time together the whole month, and Simon expressed disbelief at Izzy ever showing an interest in him, while also revealing that he was surprised he was so attracted to a girl like her. But their date was interrupted by vampires who were sent by Camille Belcourt, the head of the New York Vampire Clan, to collect Simon. Izzy worried about Simon going to meet with Camille alone, but Simon assured her that his new mark of cane would protect him should he run into any trouble. While Izzy did like Simon very much and had a genuine attraction toward him, she didn't tell Simon that she was interested in dating him exclusively, and unbeknownst to her, Simon was also secretly, regularly seeing Maya Roberts, a member of the New York Wolf Pack. Clary demanded Simon get his love life together before her mom and Luke Garraway's wedding, because both Maya and Izzy were going to be wedding guests, and if they both showed up as Simon's dates, neither girl was going to be happy with him, and this proved to come back to bite Simon when Maya and Izzy both showed up for one of Simon's gigs one night, and this put Simon in the horrible position of needing to admit that he'd been seeing the both of them simultaneously. Maya and Izzy were both disgusted, angered, and hurt by Simon two-timing them, and Izzy was especially angered when Simon's new lead singer, Jordan Kyle, turned out to be the werewolf that had turned Maya. Isabel held Maya as the other girl broke down sobbing and screaming, and comforted her as Simon stood there, mortified at what he'd done, and they both broke up with him. Simon eventually received a note from a mysterious blackmailer, claiming that they had his girlfriend, and that he must come to 232 Riverside Drive before dark, or else his girlfriend's throat would be cut out. Simon, thinking the blackmailer was referring to either Isabel or Maya, frantically called them and demanded to know whether they were alright or not. When both Izzy and Maya snippily confirmed that they were okay, and they didn't know what Simon was talking about, Simon was relieved but it left Izzy realizing that Clary was potentially in trouble. Clary ended up texting Izzy, telling her that she would be going to that very address in the blackmailer's note, and that she needed backup. Clary, who'd been trying to track down a religious cult that worshipped a greater demon and was sacrificing babies by injecting them with demon blood, got badly hurt in her fight with a hydra demon that was there. Luckily for her, Izzy had come in just in time and saved her. Izzy took Clary back to her room at the institute and patched her up by giving her some erotzies and advising her to get some rest. It was there that Clary acknowledged while she could have drawn erotzies on herself, it felt nice to have someone else take Take care of her, and that while Izzy wasn't the warmest person, Clary loved and appreciated when Izzy showed her kindness in her own way. Clary told Isabel about the dead baby that she'd seen at Beth Israel Hospital, and her theory that someone was trying to create more babies like Sebastian. Clary had trouble separating the two, the name of her brother and the boy she'd met back in Alicante who'd sided with Valentine during the Mortal War, still unable to fully reconcile that her brother had been alive and that he'd done such evil deeds a month ago. But Izzy coldly told her that Jace's name was Jonathan, and that she was disgusted at the thought of associating and tainting Jace's name with an individual like Sebastian, who had been responsible for Max's death. Isabel and Clary then discussed Simon, and 
Clary acknowledged that she knew Simon had been seeing Izzy and Maya simultaneously, and that she felt bad for keeping it a secret from both girls. Izzy then said that she understood why Clary had texted her to meet at the Church of Talto and not Jace, and acknowledged that she had witnessed the distance between Jace and Clary, and curiously asked Clary whether or not Jace and she had sex yet, and that if Clary was thinking about it, advised her to be safe about it. Clary felt awkward discussing the sex talk with Izzy, but Izzy simply told her they were having girl talk, and the only reason why it felt weird for Clary was that she never had a friend who was a girl before Izzy. This was another leap in Clary and Izzy's friendship, as Clary began seeing Isabel as an older sister figure whom she could confide in and get honest advice from, as Jocelyn was still extremely secretive and overbearing, not entirely trusting Clary. After Simon assisted the Conclave with capturing Camille Belcourt, he and Izzy ended up having a conversation, and Isabel confessed that she never had complete trust in boys beside her brothers, and that at age 13, she learned of her father's infidelity and how her parents only stayed together because of Max being born. Simon claimed Izzy's mom never should have confided in her 13-year-old daughter with that kind of sensitive information, as Izzy had been just a child. And Isabel confessed to Simon that he was the first person she told about her anger toward her dad, and this helped somewhat heal any hostility between the pair, and they were at least able to be civil toward each other. Sometime later, during Luke and Jocelyn's engagement party, Simon went to the Church of Talto, having been summoned by Camille, who was in league with the greater demon that had Clary hostage and Jace under her full control. Isabel gathered up Alec, Jordan, and Maya to form a rescue team, and Alec revealed to her that Talto was one of the names for the greater demon, Lilith, Adam's first wife. When they arrived at the altar of the church, they were shocked to see hundreds of babies lying dead in the cradles, all appearing to have been experimented on with demon blood. Izzy watched as Maya and Alec had the most visceral reactions, Maya getting physically sick and Alec swearing under his breath as he started to cry, and even Izzy felt that despite all her years of training, she too felt that she might have thrown up if she didn't have such a strong stomach, and this made her think of Max when he'd first been born, how she and Alec would lovingly play with him, and Izzy was disgusted at the thought of anyone trying to make a copycat of Sebastian. Together, she and Alec joined Clary and Simon in fighting Lilith. After the battle was over, Izzy and Simon made up. Izzy demanded from Simon why he didn't call them for help, and Simon admitted to her that he didn't want to drag Izzy, Alec, or the others into his problems. Izzy spluttered, D drag me into your problems? And she threw her arms around Simon tightly, nearly knocking him off his feet as she cursed under her breath at him, both frustrated but also filled with admiration at Simon's nobility. And this made Izzy realize just how much Simon cared about her, that he was willing to try and shield her from his burdens by facing them head on. He'd gone out of his way to try protecting her, and this further broke down Isabel's walls that she'd put around her heart to protect it against men. Isabel then explained to the clave everything that had happened at the church. When they later went to the rooftops of the church to collect Jace, however, Jace, along with Sebastian's corpse, was missing, which left everyone fearing the worst. For weeks, the clave issued searches for Jace and Sebastian and debated what they'd do should they ever capture them. Izzy was especially anxious for her adoptive brother's well-being, and in their weeks together worrying sick over him, Isabel and Clary grew even closer to the point where Clary spent many nights sleeping over in Izzy's bedroom at the Institute. One night in November, the kids found out the Clave chose to deprioritize the search for Jace, which prompted Alec, Clary, Isabel, and Simon to make a search party amongst themselves. They started by going to the Seely Court to talk to the Queen, with Clary desiring information from her regarding Jace's whereabouts. After Jace and Sebastian tried abducting Clary from Luke's apartment, Clary informed her friends that she witnessed Jace get badly hurt after Sebastian sustained severe injuries, and the group came to learn through Brother Zachariah that Jace was bound to Sebastian in a demonic counterpart of the Parabatai ceremony. This meant that Jace would die if Sebastian died. This prompted Clary to seal the Seely rings from the Institute, and she contacted Jace, acting as a mole and communicating with Simon telepathically through the rings. 
While Clary traveled the world with Sebastian and Jace, Izzy and the others looked for ways to sever the bond between the two boys. Izzy and Jocelyn first tried consulting with the Iron Sisters. Because only women were allowed in the Audemont Citadel, it meant that they were the only two who could go. It was while on their mission to speak with the Iron Sisters did Jocelyn tell Izzy that she knew of the woman whom Robert had cheated on Maris with, and that when she'd spoken with Sister Cleophas, the sisters had collectively said Izzy would fit right in with them. However, becoming an Iron Sister came with the deal of swearing off marriage altogether, which in turn meant Izzy would have to swear off boys, an idea that didn't appeal to her. While the Iron Sisters revealed they couldn't make a weapon that would sever Jace and Sebastian's connection, they did provide information that only a heavenly weapon could be effective. Armed with this information, Isabel, Alec, Magnus, and Simon decided to summon Azazel, who said that he would help them, but at the price of them giving up one happy memory. While they provided their end of the bargain, Azazel told them that if they released him, he could take Sebastian with him back to hell. Magnus, knowing that they were being tricked into setting a greater demon free, banished Azazel back. Also during this time, Izzy's relationship with Simon greatly improved, with Simon spending nights with her in Magnus's apartment and entertaining her by telling her stories, even Star Wars. It was later that night that Isabel came to Simon's room at Magnus's, and when she saw how thirsty Simon was, offered him a drink of her blood. Simon was reluctant to bite her, but Isabel insisted that he feed from her. Simon, however, hated the thought of it, as the last time he bit a human, he'd ended up killing someone, and he told Izzy that he was nothing a homeless monster whose own mother had disowned him. Isabel comforted him, and she showed him the runes burnt into her flesh permanently, rhetorically asking him, ugly aren't they? Simon was shocked that Izzy would say that, and told her that there wasn't anything ugly about her. Isabel said, girls aren't supposed to be covered in scars, but they don't matter to you. And Simon responded by telling her that the runes burnt into her were part of who Isabel was. And Izzy responded by telling Simon that being a vampire was part of who he was, and that his disease didn't define him. Simon then drank from her, to the point where Izzy was left exhausted, and they fell asleep beside one another. And when Simon decided that he would be the one to talk to the angel Raziel, due to him having better chances of surviving because of his mark of Cain, Izzy was greatly worried about him. Fortunately, Simon successfully got the weapon they needed, the Blade Glorious, but Raziel removed his mark of Cain, and Izzy was relieved that Simon was no longer cursed. But then, Simon ended up learning through Clary that Sebastian had plans to create and darkened slaves by forcing Shadowhunters into drinking from a demonic version of the Mortal Cup, the Infernal Cup. Together, Simon, Izzy, and Alec formed their cavalry, and they traveled to the ritual site with the New York Conclave as well as the Wolf Pack. On the battlefield, Izzy witnessed Clary run the Blade of Glorious through Jace, which severed his demonic connection with Sebastian, but it left Jace's body infused with pure heavenly fire. This meant that he would burn anybody who tried touching him if he didn't stay calm. While Jace remained in the infirmary unconscious, Izzy and Alec took care of him and nursed him back to health. When he finally woke up, the three siblings shared a heart-to-heart, -heart, with Izzy and Alec assuring Jace that they weren't leaving his side. In the month that followed, Izzy and the others provided Jace with moral support as he trained with Jordan Kyle to control the heavenly fire through meditation. However, it was a bittersweet time period, as it had been two months since Max's death, and it was also Christmas time. After several institutes around the world were attacked by Sebastian's and darkened army, Izzy and her family were ordered to pack and stay in Idris. Before she left with her family, Simon expressed to her how badly he wished he were going with her, but Izzy told him he would be safer in New York, away from Sebastian. But she didn't want to leave Simon without some form of protection, so she gave him her ruby demon necklace, so that way he could at least sense demons coming near him. But before Simon could tell her that he loved her, Izzy cut him off, not wanting to hear those words under the current circumstances, as it would sound too much like a final goodbye. 
While in Idris, Isabel grew more and more upset by her parents being so cold and distant from each other. Alec made the mistake of blurting out, a lot of people split up when they have a child who dies, which caused Izzy to angrily storm out of the room, because at this point, the only people she confided in about Robert's affair had been Simon and Jocelyn. Eventually, the Audemont Citadel was under attack, and Izzy and Alec begged their parents to let them go help Jason and Clary, but Robert kept insisting they do not go. That was when Izzy angrily lashed out at her dad, revealing she knew about Robert's affair and that since Max was now dead, he could be freed of responsibilities and abandon his wife and children. She then fled from the guard and ended up running into Simon, who had arrived from New York after having escaped a captivity from Maureen Brown, whom he sired and had become the head of the New York Vampire Clan. Izzy took Simon with her back to the house she was staying at with Jace, Alec, and her parents, and she found Simon a change of clothes from Alec's wardrobe. Simon, sensing that Izzy was hurting over something, tried asking her some more personal questions. But Isabel, not wanting to discuss the argument she'd gotten into with her dad, deflected his questions and attempted seducing him. They jokingly roleplayed on Alec's bed, playing the role of costume drama-like characters, only for Alec to walk in on them, mortified. Later on, they learned the Downworlder representatives, as well as Clary's mother, had been taken captive by Sebastian, who wanted Clary and Jace to join him. They were given a deadline of two days to decide, but the kids knew they'd never hand Jace and Clary over. It was later that night that Izzy and Clary hung out in Izzy's room, as Clary couldn't stand being alone, and Izzy proceeded to do Clary's hair for her once again taking care of her, and Izzy noticed Clary clutching onto one of her hairpins so tightly that her hands had begun bleeding, and she asked Clary if she was alright before healing her, and Clary insisted she needed to be okay for Luke and Jocelyn. It was then that Emma Carstairs, an orphan of the Dark War, arrived at the house, and she informed the group that Sebastian had taken the hostages to the hellish dimension of Edom. Together, the kids used the fairy tunnels to get to Edom, and when they arrived, they were confronted by a demon that fed off dreams and presented to them their visions of what they most wanted. Izzy's vision contained Simon throwing her a surprise birthday party with her entire family, including her little brother, in attendance. But she realized it all to be just a dream when it was revealed they were celebrating her 22nd birthday, meaning Max would have been 15 at that point. After Alex shot an arrow at the demon and killed it, they found shelter in a cave, and while Izzy and Simon were patrolling, they realized that Edom was a demonic version of what Alicante was, as they recognized several important landmarks. They then raced back to tell the others what it was that they found. While investigating that realm's version of the guard, the kids were soon attacked by an army of demons. Izzy suffered the worst injuries out of everyone, and they quickly got her back to the cave, where Simon proceeded to give her his daylighter blood, as it had regenerative properties. It was while they were in the cave did Alec give Simon his blessing to date his sister, as he now recognized what a good person Simon truly was. When Izzy woke, they were alone, and they finally admitted how deeply in love they were with one another. Alec walked in on them kissing passionately, and despite his earlier blessing, he was horrified, screaming, Why does this keep happening? Why can't you go somewhere else to do these horrible things? My eyes! They eventually fought their way through the dark guard, and Clary cunningly pulled a trick into making Sebastian think that she was siding with him as the Queen of Edom, and this led to her stabbing Sebastian with the Morgenstern sword heels for us, which Clary had successfully filled with the heavenly fire from Jace earlier in the cavern. With Sebastian dead and the borders between Edom and Earth sealing, the kids, Luke, Jocelyn, and Magnus looked to get back home. Magnus called upon his father Asmodeus, who told his son that if he wanted to save his friends, it would come at the price of his warlock powers and immortality. But Simon volunteered to sacrifice himself in Magnus's place, giving up his memories of the Shadow World and his vampirism in the process. 
Isabel was devastated by Simon's sacrifice and later on asked Clary about a phone call she'd exchanged with Simon, which only confirmed that Simon had no clue who Clary was. Izzy told Clary she hated the feeling of missing someone, that she never thought she'd feel this way about some boy, and that she was sick and tired of losing so many people she loved. Clary then grabbed Isabel's hand and held it in hers and told her, I know, but remember the people you've gained too. I've gained you, and I'm grateful for that. And Izzy responded by squeezing Clary's hand tightly. Many months later, before Luke and Jocelyn's wedding, Izzy went with Magnus and Clary to see Simon as he left the St. Xavier School. Clary tried once again to jog Simon's memory to see if he remembered anything about them, but Simon still didn't. However, Simon ended up giving Clary a flyer for his band's upcoming gig, and Isabel noticed the name of the band on the poster, The Mortal Instruments. This meant that Simon was gaining back some semblance of his old memories, and Izzy and Magnus both approached him, telling him that he could be ascended and become a shadow hunter. During the wedding reception, Simon arrived with Izzy and Magnus, and while everyone was happy Simon was back, it was still hard for all of them to be in the same room as him, knowing he didn't fully remember them. Simon prepared for his ascension by being sent to the Shadowhunter Academy, and Izzy remained distant from him, as there was a strong part of her that genuinely wanted to start dating him again. Simon eventually told her that he couldn't be with her, because he still didn't have all his memories about his past life, and he didn't know if he could be the boyfriend that Isabel deserved. Although she was hurt, Izzy understood. When the Academy sent groups of students to go after a rogue vampire in New York, Izzy was among those tasked with supervising them. The vampire went to attack Simon, but Izzy sprang in and killed the vampire. And Simon was irritated at Isabel not trusting him and his life choices, as she pushed for him to ascend as a shadow hunter in the first place. This fight led to things being worse off between them, and months later, Clary and Jace visited Simon at the academy, telling him the way he'd been acting was hurting Izzy greatly. Simon sent her a letter, apologizing for his behavior, but Izzy eventually returned it to him unopened. They eventually made up and began dating again, and eventually were each other's dates for Aline Penhallow and Helen Blackthorne's wedding. Simon went on to complete his ascension, and in the process, he regained all his memories of the shot world, most of which were centered around Isabel, and their relationship grew stronger than ever, especially as Izzy helped Simon grieve the loss of his roommate and close friend George Lovelace, even supporting Simon to give himself the last name Lovelace in honor of his fallen friend. In the years of their dating, they eventually got their own place together, and in August of 2012, Simon proposed to Izzy in a spur-of-the-moment decision after a fight with some shack demons, and Izzy told Simon that she wanted an engagement party in two days, as she wanted it to happen on Max's birthday. A few weeks after their engagement party, though, Robert was killed by Annabelle Blackthorne, and Izzy and Simon went to Alicante for the funeral. Despite the horrible strain on the relationship that she'd had with her dad, Isabel grieved Robert's death harder than anyone, and she spent the funeral sobbing on Alex's shoulder. Also during this time, Ash Morgenstern, who was the son of Sebastian and the Seely Queen, was spreading a blight that infected all warlocks. And while Magnus and Alec went to the Los Angeles Institute to get a cure from Emma Carstairs and Julian Blackthorne, Izzy and Simon babysat Alec and Magnus's sons, Raphael and Max, giving Alec constant updates about Max's condition. Eventually, after Alec was elected the new consul of Alicante, the cohort threatened mass suicide if those that didn't support them refused to leave the Shadowhunter homeland. It was under Alec's leadership of the new government, the Clave in Exile, did Simon, Isabel, Clary, and Jace host the crisis team in New York to help rebuild. Three weeks later, Izzy attended Magnus and Alec's wedding at the beaches of the Los Angeles Institute, and she oversaw dressing her nephews in matching blue and gold outfits. During the wedding, Isabel was shown holding her nephew who was given her late little brother's namesake as she wiped away tears of joy, as everything at least for now was finally at peace, and everything was going to be okay. Isabel is truly such a special character because she was part of the glue that held her family and friends together through the hardest of times. 
She was truly Alex Rock as he struggled with his sexual orientation and she cherished her brothers more than anything in the world and did whatever she could to protect them, even if it meant putting on an act of promiscuity. She was also the person who was consistently there for Clary just as much as Simon had been, becoming the surrogate sister Clary had always needed, and she learned to love and trust again through Simon's persistent patience, loyalty, and kindness. She was a warrior who was so strong and independent, Yet she never once sacrificed her femininity, and she embraced her sexuality with true class and grace. Izzy's bravery, sexiness, elegance, and strength are an inspiration to us all. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new here, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for all notifications. Also be sure to leave a like and comment down below. All social media will be linked down below in the description per usual. God bless, happy viewing, and have a nice day. See ya!